Hello, my name is Shirley Self, and I'm here to talk astrology. And today I wanted to talk about a moon phase one. This is Tucker Carlson's horoscope. Um, he's born the 16th of May uh, at 10.07 a.m. in San Francisco. I, I think you can maybe see it good enough so that I don't have to point out each uh, planet to you. Um, but this is Pluto, Jupiter, South Node, Uranus, in case they're too crowded for you to see. Okay. Okay, the sun is up here in the... Uh, uh, in the 11th house of uh, uh, groups, gangs, um, businesses, and um, and the uh, great ambition right resides up there. And that is, I guess, to have a lot of friends, <laughs> to be famous. And he's got the um, Venus uh, right there on the Midheaven, too. And that helps. And he is a good-looking fellow. Cancer rising. Um, his, uh, the sun, um, he's got some interesting fixed stars. The sun is uh, uh, conjunct <laughs> the worst of the worst, Caput Algo. Uh, Caput Algo is um, the uh, star of losing your head. And uh, it's strange how many uh, people who have lost their heads had an interesting Caput Algo uh, prominent at the time, like John Denver, um, um, Isadora Duncan, I think, yes. Um, both of them lost their heads. Anyway, he's got Caput Algo there, and um, here is Alcyone at 29 degrees, um, and more than 29 degrees. This is all, this is just a few um, minutes short of 30 degrees. So, uh, and Alcyone, um, the two of them, and uh, here, the north node here is conjunct sheet. And sheet is the uh, uh, star of drowning. All of these uh, fixed stars bring a certain amount of violence to the nature of this, of this uh, sun, moon. Um, and the fixed stars are... Uh, and that's what they tend to bring. And uh, often they will bring uh, fame and fortune, but the violence tends to come with, and often it is the violence that brings them down. So um, the oriental planet is Saturn there. And, um, and, and, and interesting about a moon phase one is they, they need an ally. The moon phase one is so very passive, and um, the out of phase moon phase one that isn't um, happy relearning how to uh, take care of the body, um, a moon phase one just gets furious at, at not being able to grab a hold of something and um, move it. Um, he has, let me see how many planets he's got. He only has two cardinal planets and uh, four fixed and four mutable. So uh, it's not bad. It's just. His cardinal planets um, uh, don't help him um, uh, move things, do things, create things. Um, so let's see what else. Oh, and this um, uh, Saturn here is unaspected. So that ambitious Saturn is um, uh, free, free range. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's got no help, but it has no hindrance. It just is there. It's on all the time. And that's that ambition. Ambition for what? Well, look at all this Taurus. And then look at who rules the second house of money. The sun. Sun in Taurus. Uh, all those planets in Taurus. Ruled by this. Okay, <laughs> let me give you the go around here about this chart is totally ruled by Mercury. How do I get that? Well... Let's just look at the ascendant. The ascendant is is in Cancer, and that's ruled by the Moon. And the Moon here is ruled by Venus, and the Venus here is ruled by Mars, <laughs> and the Mars is ruled by Jupiter, and um, Jupiter is ruled by Mercury. And this is true of every planet and angle on there. They're all ruled by Mercury. This is a person who was born to talk. 
uh, because he's got the Pluto there, it's addicted to talk. Um, south node there. Well, let's let's look at this, the makeup of this of these planets here. We've got all of this down here, versus all of this up here. So, um, the only personal planet down here is Mars, and it's a malefic, and they're all retrograde. They are. Now, that's a good thing when the south node or the nodes are retrograde, as they are here, because the nodes, uh, they, they're retrograde most of the time. And when they uh, go forward, um, <laughs> instead of retrograde, it, it, they're kind of hiccups in, um, in life. And people who are born with that have um, um, a life that will go along and then stop and then change direct, go along. <laughs> it's... Uh, they lack seem to lack a certain continuity. I don't know if that's true across the board. I only know a few people who have that um, Mercury direct, or I mean uh, the nodes direct. Anyway, so the nodes down here um, in the third house help him to be addicted to uh, talking. Also, because the nodes down there, he he thinks he knows more than he knows, and. Um, he just, um, uh, this third house stuff, I'll bet he had a, a rough time with his siblings, if he had siblings, or it could have been just the gang in the neighborhood beating him up, I don't know. Um, but, um, and his parents, yeah, it just looks like, it just looks like he had a rough childhood. The parents, uh, the uh, father's ruled by this Venus in Aries, father was I, evidently gone all the time. Mothers ruled by this Mars and Sagittarius, and it looks like mm, it's in Sagittarius. She was, for some reason, gone all the time. Maybe due to illness? Don't know. Um, it is ruled by this Jupiter in Virgo. Jupiter in Virgo is not a happy camper. Uh, not at all. Um, so you look at all these retrograde planets, and this guy's been at this mood phase before maybe a couple of times. This is a heavy burden to carry. Heavy burden to carry. And the way he, he deals with it, he probably does this, and he does this, and he does this, and he does this. But to integrate these uh, powerfully negative um, energies, and that's the way they're appearing. They're all retrograde. And, um, and that tends, and they're all opposing. Look at this uh, sun moon conjunction there uh, opposing Neptune. That's an incredible uh, vulnerability. It also can bring out the obsessive nature um, of uh, well, Taurus, it, I wouldn't yeah, it can be very obsessive. Obsessive about what it owns or what it wants. Um, and tenacious. Uh, and that's just, well, tenacious. Look at this guy. He's not only got these tenacious Taurus planets, but he's got um, the Mercury. Is it a 165 degrees from Uranus? The Mercury, 165 to Uranus. Oh, I'm sorry. The Venus is 165 to Uranus. The way you figure out the 165 is you just look at the opposition and move 15 degrees right or 15 degrees left. And that gives you the 165, the uh, what I call the snapping turtle aspect of just incredible tenacity, persistence. Um, I can't let go. And so he's got this one. He's got this one. What else? Oh, Chiron and Pluto. And that's an urge for power. I mean, that's that's a, that's a a need, a need for personal power, um, and probably because it, this person is very vulnerable. He fe he feels he's, he's running scared. He really is. Um, I think that's why he's chosen a powerful allies. Is because he's just afraid of the world. The moon, um, because the moon is at 29 degrees, 
and anytime you get and it's void of course and that's a terrible passivity I mean there's nothing the moon doesn't do much I mean it's hard to, you know when a moon is VC don't buy a new TV you can go ahead and brush your teeth and, and go to the bathroom and, and clean your house and do the things that you usually do, but um, uh, don't take on anything new um, uh, because the moon VC doesn't go exactly where you wanted it to go if it has no um, uh, connections to the rest of the energy field. So, so the moon is not only um, VC, but it's at the 29th degree and um, it's got this 165 to to Mars so it, it, this is all it's got it's just this incredible tenacity hang on hang on because all, everything else you've got is just this opposition and this opposition to Neptune does not mean that it, it is not void of course notice the moon has moved this is a waning opposition it's still um, real tight two degrees it's um it's it, um it's problematic it makes him vulnerable to people um and he, he can't trust he doesn't know who to trust um so and and looking where it is that's an unhappy love life yeah that's that's a guy just <laughs> let me not comment on that it's just he, he's not got a good life and this Jupiter over here, you know, Jupiter the great benefit. Well, it's unfortunately in Virgo, <laughs> and it's not happy in Virgo. Um, it's uh, it can give him because it rules here. It can give him problems with his liver. He could also have problems with his uh, um, adrenals. Um, but this. This um, Jupiter, because it's smack dab in the middle, it's got Pluto on this side, Uranus on this side, it's called besieged, and it, it feels cornered. Um, so, so we got the Chiron right up there, right on the midheaven. Um, so that shows uh, the wounding of Chiron to have happened later in his life, probably in his later schooling, um, and a disillusionment um, with the government, a, a feeling of, well, it's also powerlessness, powerlessness. And notice, it's, uh, it, he's got this need for power, this uh, Chiron here, sorry, Chiron-Pluto uh, connection is this terrible need for power. And um, here, this is a terrible need for freedom. And I'll bet they're in a constant war with him. Because in order to have power, he's virtually had to... The only way a moon phase one can, <laughs> can have power is they, have, they follow somebody else's lead. Notice his uh, moon and his Mercury follow the sun. So as the, the planets follow the sun or are considered much more passive than the planets that lead the sun. Here's the active planet, and it rules the descendant. Here's, um, <laughs> so the thing about a moon phase one is that they, they, um, they don't have any gumption, and so other people will say, hey, come with me and let's go see the movie, whatever. Let's go learn to dance, whatever. Um, Otherwise, uh, Moon Phase One, um, <laughs> just happy, hanging around, being a high spiritual person that they are. A Moon Phase One, let me show you that. Probably seen it. Moon Phase One. The Moon Phase One is the result of the whole previous cycle. So what? How Yeats describes the moon phase one is it's the uh, physical manifestation of spiritual perfection. This being the spiritual perfection that w w was worked, achieved in so many lifetimes in that, that past uh, cycle. 
So that's a moon phase one. Their mask is over here at um, uh, 15. And um, so it's interesting to me that a moon phase one needs, they needs other pe need other people kind of tell them what to do. Um, so this is the United States Mercury right here. I think, so, I think Mercury is at 25. This is at 24. And over here on his uh, descendant is the Pluto. Is uh, United States Pluto. This is in the uh, eighth house and second house. So it's in the money houses. So that's appropriate that somebody, um, that this person uh, is going to hook up with uh, the money houses in the United States. He plugs right into the tr U.S. chart. And um, <laughs> right on his ascendant, descendant is the money. So the people that he pays attention to and the people that are leading him uh, are the plutocrats, the people, the big money people, um, wallowing in around in the United States second house of resources. Uh, and so here, well, right on his midheaven is his Venus, and it opposes the United States uh, Saturn. We're, and our Saturn's in the 10th house, and it rules government. Most, yeah, the, it, rules, um, it rules the government in general. And um, so this is uh, opposing, um, what, <laughs> opposing the United States government, which I don't blame anybody for opposing the United States government, which has done a lousy job for people for all these years and uh, has still sold its soul and is not buying it back from the plutocrats. So, um, where was I? I was talking about, well, oh, I was lining him up. Okay, here's the United States. Here on his Mercury is the United States descendant. Here on his Mars is the United States ascendant. So what he has done is this Mercury, which rules his whole chart, is on the United States descendant of open enemies. Is that appropriate or what? And, um, and he attacks this Mars retrograde. Retrograde Mars can be nasty. I mean, it does not really play fair. Um, that's not always true, but in, in my experience it is. Uh, it's on our ascendant, so it attacks the integrity of the United States. Um, here, this uh, Uranus, and this Uranus is also unaspected, except for this. It's got an inconjunct here to Saturn, and it's got this op opposition to um, Chiron which does not count, this too, is unaspected. So he's free, this Uranus is right down there in the third house, to um, believe that he's just as smart as he wants to think he is, because he's all full of ideas. Um, so what else do I have here? It's interesting, this, this Venus. I looked at um, Rush Limbaugh's chart, and Rupert Murdoch's chart. And they've got interesting Venus tie-ins to the United States also. They're smack dab on the United States South Node. <laughs> smack dab. Anyway, um, let's see what else did I want to tell you about this guy. Uh, I think I've pretty covered it. It's, he's running on instincts, not intellect. He thinks he's running on intellect, but the south node over there says, eh, and it's unaspected. So it's not useful for him. It just keeps him uh, running on. Um, the success of a moon phase one has to do with recognizing and respecting the physical. R remember the, uh, okay, let's look at a moon phase one again. Um, this is the result of uh, the fourth quarter. 
And the fourth quarter is full of daredevils and people who uh, accomplish what they do by virtually ignoring the costs to the physical. Uh, physical is sacrificed. Um, we're thinking Chuck Yeager, and I think he's, a, he's here, and Evil Knievel. And I think he might be here too. 27 seems to encourage this kind of behavior. Anyway, um, they sacrifice the physical to their own purposes. And so the moon phase one has got to learn to give up <laughs> that attitude toward the physical and to re learn to regard the physical as holy. Because it is. It's just a little lower vibration of um, everything else. So um, they have to pay attention to the physical. They've got incredible instincts. And when the physical body says, I don't like the way it smells here, let's not go there. Don't go there. Because the instincts are um, in the body. And the uh, joy and the happiness of the body is, um, uh, has, has, has to be what uh, Moon Phase 1 is about. They have to switch their allegiance from their own spiritual perfection to um, the fact that they're a, they're a physical being, a material being, a material girl, and uh, join, enjoy, join in life and enjoy life because uh, the joy is of the physical. Yes. So anyway, uh, I've never watched him. I've seen clips of him on... Um, YouTube, but I've, I've not seen him a whole program. I, I'm easily uh, angered now, so best not uh, deliberately do it. Um, but he is, you see that cancer rising. He is cranky. He is cranky. And uh, the uh, false mask or how a moon phase goes wrong is to simply become furious at the fact that they can't do much of anything except exist, and that's their job, exist, and uh, ex lead a moral life. A moral life is a life that uh, honors the physical, that does not wound the physical. So, that's a moon phase one. <laughs> anyway, I hope and pray that you're well, and um, we're doing okay over here, and tell the people you love that you love them, because it's really needed really needed in this world now. Take care.